الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحابه ومن استنى بسنة لهم الدين All praise due to Allah and your last peace and blessings be on the last Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and on all those who follow the path of righteousness until the last day We are proceeding to question 150 after completion of the third level of belief in Qadr which was belief in third level of belief in Qadr which was what? Yeah, belief in the will wish or will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the first level was belief in the, the completeness of Allah's knowledge second level belief in the recording of that knowledge third level belief in Allah's will the completeness of his will and we looked at the two aspects of his will whether it was his legal will or whether it was his creational will right in this section now we go to the fourth level which has to do with creation the question what is the proof for the fourth level of belief in Qadr which is the level of creation the author al-Hakami says Allah the Most High said Allah khaliku kulli shay wa huwa ala kulli shay'in wakil surah al-Zumar verse 62 Allah is the creator of all things and he is the guardian over all well this covers all elements of creation everything because everything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is created is his creation and as he said he's the creator of all things the second evidence Allah the Most High said هَلْ مِنْ خَالِقٍ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ is there any creator other than Allah who provides for you from the sky and the earth Surah Fatir verse 3 and the third evidence and this addresses the second evidence addresses the provisions every benefit that we take from this world has been created by Allah subhanahu so it being his creation means that he can determine when it is to come and when it is not to come the third evidence Allah the Most High said in Surah Nuqman هَذَا خَلْقُ اللَّهِ فَأَرُونِي مَاذَا خَلَقَ الَّذِينَ مِن دُونِهِ this is the creation of Allah so show me that which those besides him have created any claim that there exists anything which is outside of Allah's creation is false those who are given abilities which are outside of Allah's creation meaning as for example the Zoroastrians who have attributed evil to Satan right, that Satan creates evil meaning that they don't want to attribute evil to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they have identified something in creation which is outside of Allah's creation so obviously their concept of Allah is deficient whereas the Islamic concept is that everything besides Allah is his creation 
Allah the Most High said, the fourth example, Allah الذي خلقكم ثم رزقكم ثم يميتكم ثم يحييكم هل من شركائكم من يفعل من ذلكم من شيء Allah is he who created you, then provided food for you, then caused you to die, then he will give you life. Is there any of your partners of Allah that do anything of that? Surah Rum, verse 40. And the fifth evidence from Surah As-Safat 96. وَاللَّهُ خَلَقَكُمْ وَمَا تَعْمَلُونَ while well, Allah has created you and what you do. So this is even more specific in that it takes into account the actions of people. People and their deeds are no different from any other created thing when it comes to predestination, when it comes to qadr. Allah already knows what He will create through the actions of His slaves and He knows what they will do. He has already written all of that in the Lawh al-Mahfuz. Allah created them as He willed, and His decree concerning them will be fulfilled. They will act in accordance with the will of Allah. Those whom Allah has decreed will be blessed, will be guided, and those He decreed will be doomed, will go astray. So Allah created not only ourselves, but even the actions that we attribute to ourselves. Ultimately, they are part and parcel of Allah's creation. Allah the Most High also said, By the soul and him who portioned it, proportioned it, then showed it what corrupts it and what makes it righteous. Our knowledge of good and evil, which is within our souls, this was placed there by Allah. Allah the Most High also said, مَن يَهْدِ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ الْمُهْتَدِي وَمَن يُدْلِلْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ Whomsoever Allah guides, He is the guided one. And whomsoever He sends astray, then those are the losers. Guidance in terms of what is created, this is, this is included within the, the realm of creation. So even the issue of guidance, though it is choices, these are part of the choices uh, that we make, etc., it's still considered to be a part of Allah's creation. Furthermore, Al-Hakami brings another verse from Surah Hujurat, the last of his verses which are evidence. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانِ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَكَرَّهَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكُفْرَ وَالْفُسُوقَ وَالْأَسْيَانِ But Allah has endeared faith to you and beautified it in your hearts and He has made disbelief, wickedness and disobedience hateful to you. So this is going right inside of the individual, what goes on within him, and talking about Allah's workings within the individual himself. In terms of evidences, and he, the, the author said, and there are many other verses carrying the same meaning, meaning, he then quotes a couple of hadiths to, to support it. Al-Bukhari reported in his treatise entitled Khalq Af'alul Ibad The Actions of Creatures Are Created from Hudayfa that the Prophet ﷺ said إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَالِكُ كُلَّ صَانِعٍ وَصَنْعَتَهُ Allah created every doer and his action. The Prophet ﷺ had also said O oh Allah, give my soul piety and purify it. You are the best of those who purify. Truly, you are its owner and protector. In terms of the guidance, if we went back to the verse uh, 178 from Surah Al-A'raf, 
من يهد الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فاولئك هم الخاسرون whom so ever Allah guides he is the guided one whom so ever he sends astray and those are the losers there are some further hadiths which address this issue uh, Abdullah ibn Amr he reported that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had said indeed Allah created people in darkness and he cast his light upon them anyone who was hit by that light will be guided and anyone who was missed will be misguided because of this i say the pen is dry in regards to allah's knowledge statement of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam indeed allah created people in darkness then he cast his light upon them anyone who was hit by that light will be guided and anyone who was missed will be misguided because of this i say the pen is dry in regard to allah's knowledge of course this hadith shouldn't be taken to mean that it is just an accident why we are guided if you happen to be hit by the light you're guided and if you weren't hit you know you're not guided i mean the hadith is saying that but and this is this is based on Allah's knowledge of the individual those who are worthy of his light will be hit by his light and those who are not worthy of it will not be so it's not arbitrary you know because Allah has not created anything in sport and without uh reason in haphazard accidental manner this is not how Allah creates it creates with wisdom so uh Allah is most wise and infinitely just and he would not leave it as an accident to determine whether you're going to be guided or not. The second hadith from Abu Musa al-Ash'ari he quoted the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as saying indeed Allah created Adam from one handful that he picked up from all over the earth. Thus Adam's offspring came according to the earth. Among them the ruddy white in complexion the light complexion the black and those in between and among them were those who would be easy going and those who would be sad those who would be corrupt and those who would be good and those in between right again this hadith addresses the origin of human physical differences as well as human inclinations but we should again note that Allah then tests each individual in an appropriate way no one is tested beyond his or her capacity for Allah is most just and infinitely wise so though each and every one of us has inclinations which differ right some people they don't have that much of an inclination for example to want to steal or some people may have more of an inclination <coughs> you know some people may have more of an inclination to be faithful and chaste other people have more of an inclination to adultery and fornication and and so on and so forth i mean all of the major sins you know some people get angry more easily that's their nature and that leads them towards murder and other kinds of things and other people are more calm and so on so there are certain elements of our character which we are created with and that has to do with the origin of our creation from what elements of the earth we were created so somebody say then then you know this seems to support some of the claims of the west that you know our inclinations are biological so we can't really blame people right especially for the homosexuals i mean this is the big claim right we are born that way <clears throat> these are our inclinations it's by nature but we say no you still made a choice you might have had an inclination you might have had a desire you might have had a leaning all these factors may be there but it is not something beyond your ability to say no that's the whole point so allah tests each individual 
according to the level of their inclinations. And this is where the justice lies. Because one might say, this is unjust. Somebody had homosexual inclinations, other people didn't have it. And then there's this big punishment for homosexuality. You know, it seems kind of unfair that this person had those inclinations. What happens is that for that person, he gets his set of tests. And for the other person, they get their set of tests. So the tests that people get in their lives are tailored to each person's own inclinations and nature. That's the whole thing. That the test of this life is tailored for each and every individual. That is the greatness of Allah. I mean, that kind of complexity of tests is mind-boggling. That each and every creature has its own test. But that is the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last hadith, and after which the uh, author said there are many other similar narrations, which speak about Allah creating or Allah's hand in human actions. This addresses the overall issue of uh, creation of which the most important aspect that we need to look at in this particular question is the actions of Allah and the actions of His creatures. The actions of Allah are true and real. They conform to what is entailed by His names and His attributes. They influence all of creation in accordance with His will, His knowledge and His ability. The slave of Allah has real ability, will, choice and action. A human being's ability to move and to believe are actions that are truly attributed to him. These actions are created by Allah. A human being's movement, standing, sitting, and so on are real actions which Allah decreed, set under his ability, willed, and created for them. The will and action of human beings follow those of Allah or we can say they are subject to those of Allah this is the course of the Salaf this is the way of understanding held by the Salaf when we use the term Salaf we are talking about the early generation of righteous Muslim scholars following the way of the first three generations about whom the Prophet ﷺ said the best of generations are my or is my generation then those who follow them then those who follow them that's the Sahaba the Tabi'een Tabi'u Tabi'een those first three generations and we insist on this principle beyond the issue of the Qur'an and the Sunnah in order to preserve the correct understanding of the Qur'an and the Sunnah. So it's something that we shouldn't forget. Something that we should always keep in mind and refer back to. Qur'an and Sunnah everybody agrees on. But how do we understand the Qur'an and Sunnah? This is where the differences come. So by saying we stick to that understanding held by that, those first few generations who were closest to the revelation who had the best insight who were praised by Prophet Muhammad in that way we preserve the correct understanding and protect our faith from deviation now this understanding is basically between two extremes and they represent two groups that deviated in the past the first group claimed that predestination deprived human beings of their ability to choose 
According to this claim, human beings have no will and no real actions. They're like feathers in the wind, sticks in a stream. <coughs> Their actions only appear to be theirs. <coughs> but they're not theirs. It's really Allah's actions. This group is known as, in Arabic, Al-Jabriya. Or in English we call them the Jabrites. Jabrites. From Jabr, which means to, be, to compel or to force. And they represent followers of Jaham ibn Safwan. He's the first person in the Muslim world to make this claim. So they're also referred to as the Jahmites after this individual's name, Jaham. The second group, they're known as the Qadariya or the Qadarites. They totally denied Qadr and claim that human beings create their own actions by their own ability and their own will. In effect, this belief makes human beings creators besides Allah. Consequently, the Prophet ﷺ referred to them as the Zoroastrians of this nation. He called them the Zoroastrians of this nation. Majus hadhihi al-Ummah. And this is because the fact that the Zoroastrians claim that Satan created evil. Someone besides Allah who is involved in the process of creation. Abdullah ibn Umar related that the Prophet ﷺ said, the Qadarites are the Magians or the Majus of this nation. If they become ill, do not visit them. When they die, do not attend their funerals. This hadith is authenticated in Sahih Sunan Abi Dawood. That covers basically the evidence, evidences for the fourth level of belief in Qadr, the level of creation. Question 152, or before we go on, is there any question concerning those evidences? What is meant by the level of creation in Qadr? Some of these evidences are secondary evidences. Like for example, Ayah, Mayya, that seems to be more an evidence for the Mashiach rather than the creation. Well, uh, but this question, are some of the evidences, secondary evidences and some are primary evidences? Uh, basically, some of the evidences are obvious evidences and some are not as obvious. Uh, the, the, the example you gave of whoever Allah guides is guided is an evidence for the creation of guidance within the individual. On one hand, yes, it is also evidence for Allah's will. But it's also evidence for creation. Because creation takes place in accordance with Allah's will. And remember, ultimately all four levels are descriptions of one thing, right? Which is Qadr. So the overlapping is natural. The overlapping will be natural. So the issue of guidance goes into the individual and his actions. Some of them speak about creation in general. The, the, the provision within creation that we take. The human being and his actions. And those ones which appear more secondary really are addressing elements of human actions, whether they are physical actions or in terms of the actual deeds, external deeds, or their spiritual actions, which are in terms of their internal deeds. Further question? Okay, question 152, which relates to the issue of Allah being the creator of everything. 
What is meant by the Prophet ﷺ's statement, All good is in your hands, and evil is not attributable to you, when Allah is the creator of everything. This statement, all good is in your hands and evil is not attributed to you, is a part of a, a lengthy hadith, and is found in Sahih Muslim, narrated by Ali ibn Abi Talib. It's authentic, naturally. Now, he explained, al Hakami explained, the meaning is that all actions of Allah are purely good by way of His attribution to them. Or we could say by way of its attribution to Him. And they're emanating from Him. They have no relation to evil. For He, the Most High, is most wise, most just, and all his actions contain wisdom and justice. He puts everything in the places suitable for them, as is known to him, the one free from all imperfections, the Most High. Thus, whatever evil is in the ordainment, it would be from the perspective of its attribution to the slave due to the destruction which might afflict him as a result of what he has earned himself in just and full measure. Allah the Most High said, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٍ And whatever of misfortune befalls you, it is because of what your hands have earned, and he pardons much. So the author is addressing the issue of Allah's actions being fundamentally good. From his perspective, it is all good. There is no evil in it. From the perspective of the creatures, there may be evil with regards to their personal suffering as a result of what he has decreed. Right? It's relative, and we spoke about that before. Pain. Remember we discussed about pain and how it is something evil relative to the individual, but on, on a particular level, but on another level it's something good. It's letting him know when he's, when he's hurt, you know, that he needs to get treated. Uh, so it has a purpose, it has a good purpose, though it may contain in it suffering. <coughs> and in any case, whatever suffering human beings endure or are afflicted with, Allah already said that this is a result of what we have done. So, one cannot then blame Allah and say, why me? The question is, if it doesn't happen, why not you? But of course the issue comes when we deal with those who are innocent, or those who we perceive as innocent. A child suffers. What is it done? How do we explain that? You know, and this is where people then want to attribute it and say there couldn't be a God because there's no justice here, there's no fairness here. That child is without sin. Why should it suffer? But again, as we said, uh, the future when we looked at the child with Khidr, the child who was killed, others were protected from the harm of that child. Of course, what happens to that child is another issue. That, as scholars have pointed out, that the child would be included among those who are brought back and given a choice. But the fact that the child was killed to protect it from the, from the evil that he would have done to those people, is indicative that it will make the wrong choice when it is brought back. 
But in the fulfillment of Allah's justice, as Allah said in the Quran, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا That I will not punish anyone until a messenger has come to them, meaning come to them when you are mature and capable of making a choice, they would be brought back along with the others and given the choice. The other uh, evidence which the author brings, وَمَا ظَلَمْنَاهُمْ وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ الظَّالِمِينَ I did not wrong them, instead they were the wrongdoers. Allah did no wrong, Allah does no wrong to any human being. Human beings are the ones who do wrong. And that's Surah Zukhruf, the last evidence, Surah Yunus. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَظْلِمُ النَّاسَ شَيْئًا وَلَكِنَّ النَّاسَ أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ Truly, Allah does not wrong humankind in any way. Instead, it is humankind who wrong themselves. So, this goes back, as we said, to the issue of nothing being 100% evil. <coughs> Whatever Allah has created has an element of good in it, which is the purpose of its creation. Not the evil which is relative to the circumstance in which it occurs. One may argue that there is still a relationship between the good and the evil. Evil is still something that has been foreordained and created. This is true. But in this respect, the thing is not evil. Certainly it existed, its existence is attributed to Allah. But from that point of view, it is not evil. It is evil because He has not made it good or conducive to anything good. This deprivation of goodness is not a thing that one may ascribe to Allah, who has every good in His hands. This is addressing the issue we said before of uh, the basic nature of things being good. In the wrong place, they, or what appears to us to be the wrong place, they appear to be harmful, etc., and evil. In the right place, they're obviously good, but the reality is that the thing itself is not evil. It's just where it ends up. We spoke about that before, like a knife. A knife used to put your butter on your bread is good. A knife used by a murderer to stab somebody in their heart is evil. You know? But the knife itself, it wasn't good or evil. The knife was good. It was something oh, fundamentally good. Part of Allah's creation is fundamentally good. How it is being used now is what turns it into evil. It should be noted that good has three causes. Creation, preparation, and promotion. Creation, khalq, preparation, i'dad, and promotion, imdad. To create something is good. And that is for Allah alone. Similarly, preparing something for something else and promoting it is also good. When there is no preparation or promotion, evil comes about. Their absence is not something attributed to Allah. He just does the opposite. Creation in and of itself, to create something, is good. Some people ask the question, why did God create me in the first place? You know, why didn't He just not create me? So I wouldn't have to deal with issues of hell. Just some issues that people arise, raise, you know. The bottom line is that either your creation was a good thing or it wasn't a good thing. Fundamentally. And as we look at things in the world in general, 
Creation is good. The creation, whatever people create, these things are good. Everything, everything else, we can appreciate them. Now, people might abuse them. People might use them in the wrong way, etc. So they may turn out to be bad in that sense. But the actual act of creating something, do we need the last case is not real true creation, it's manipulation. Is in itself a good thing. Existence is better than inexistence. It's a good thing that God does. It's a good thing. Following that, then preparation for good, being prepared for good, being given the opportunity, the pressure to do good, that's a good thing. Can I say that's a bad thing? No. Now the person doesn't choose to do good, then they're the ones who have chosen other than what Allah has provided for them. Right? Here's that the preparation. Promotion of good, promoting that good meaning that Allah then not only has He made good prayer to you, He has helped you to do that good. Of course, justice requires that He helps those who deserve His help and not those who are His enemies, those who are evil, etc. etc. So the fact that he doesn't have them is not a bad thing. It's still good. Because justice requires that. If one asks why Allah did not promote and <coughs> strengthen something with goodness when he created it, Yeah. 
like more than he like him to do that. So he may like him to do something, but not like him to do that thing. You know, every good thing we are able to do, he may not be able to do. And that's why Okay, so question 152. As you said, all good is in your hands and evil is not attributable to you. This addresses the issue of evil and good in Allah's creation that everything which Allah creates is ultimately good and evil is only relative and in any case evil itself is not a thing but the absence of good doesn't have an existence in and of itself to say it was created 
but it is the absence of good. So even from both perspectives, we don't really attribute evil to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we said that whatever He creates, having an element of good to it, it being the purpose of its creation, and that the evil which may be relative to his creation, uh, it has less harm than the good which Allah intended to bring about, which is why he went ahead with that thing. And this is how we are supposed to function in general, where we see something whose evil is greater than its good, then we leave that. The good there is no longer desirable. Where something's good is greater than its evil, we can do this. This is something desirable which may be done. And the Sharia looks at a variety of its principles on this basis. If we just looked briefly at alcohol, we said, there is good in it. People benefit from it. Allah says there is good in it. But the harm from it far outweighs the good, so it's prohibited. Plural marriage, polygamy, there is evil in it. Evil from the perspective of the women involved. The first wife is most often dissatisfied, is upset, doesn't like it. She may accept it theoretically, because Islam says it's permissible, but she doesn't like it in her heart. There's harm here, there's hurt, she suffers. But the good which comes to the society as a whole from it, outweighs the evil which comes to the individuals. Maybe to, the, to her, or sometimes to her children, or whatever. And some people may say, okay, some people didn't abuse it. You know, you have some people who abuse polygamy. But still, you have people who abuse monogamy. So, we can't argue that something simply because it's abused, we say, oh, we, we don't we want to rule this out because it's abused. No. So where the good outweighs the evil, and we find that the Sharia supports it, promotes it, etc. Okay, we'll stop here um, and um, we'll do question number 153 uh, 4, I think 155 completes the, the chapter uh, what I will try to do in the next um, classes is to uh, give you some sample questions of uh, a test on the material that we'll have. Uh, hopefully by the last class all the material will be ready uh, for you to study from. We'll print it up and get it in your hands. Uh, this is a little easier than the uh, Surah Al-Kahf. For those of you who are still waiting for Surah al um, this is a shorter amount of material. Uh, the course has been only a few months. So, uh, inshallah, this will be ready without any problems. Anyway, any questions on, on the on question number 152? Question number of the previous uh, on Tabdir Azali, the hadith which talks about uh, the ordering to the pen to write the Tabdir through the day of judgment until the establishment of the Sa'ah. Is there any reason why it's the Sa'ah or is it? <coughs> okay, but this question back to the um, what we call the 
the decree uh, or the, the eternal decree or taqdir azali where Allah has commanded the pen to write everything that was and would be up until the final hour um, brother's question is there any reason why it was limited to the final hour uh, personally I can't think of anything uh, this is what the Prophet said this is what Allah had instructed Yesterday you attended the